<laughs> this is a new Porsche 911 GT3 RS and I'm really excited about driving it today. In fact, it's a little bit like an AT-AT walker from the film The Empire Strikes Back because when I was a kid, there's nothing I wanted more than the AT-AT toy. And now I'm a big kid, there's no toy I want more than a GT3 RS. Unfortunately, I never had an AT-AT because they're quite rare and hard to come by. And my dad also said he wasn't spending 50 quid on just a piece of plastic. Emotional damage. Likewise today, these are quite rare and gonna be very hard to come by and they're quite expensive. But I'm gonna try and do all that's in my power to get one. Do you think I should? Let me know in the comments below. Get Matt a GT3 RS, we're gonna start a campaign. Anyway, in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about this car, the exterior, the interior, what it's like to drive, what it's like to thrash, what it's like to drift, what it's like to launch. See how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour. I know that's not the main point of this car, but still. I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching Car Wow, and that's what I do. Buy, sell, car, wow. Let's start this video by talking about the design of the new GT3 RS. So obviously what Porsche wanted to do with this was to fit loads of lot of necessary wings and stuff on it to appeal to the fast and furious crowd because obviously that's what this car's all about. Actually, that's a load of nonsense. All this aero is serious stuff that does a job and it's so complicated, I've actually had to bring along a man from Porsche to explain it. So this is Rob from Porsche. Hi, Matt. Hi, so explain to me what's going on here at the front. So at the front, we've got two things. We have downforce pushing the car down onto the ground. Yep. That's the bit you can see at the bottom. So that's the splitter. This. That's that bit. And that's different than a GT3. Yep. So it's going to capture more air, create more downforce. There's something else I've noticed that will help the aerodynamics. Porsche badge. It's not a normal badge and it's not even a sticker like on the GT3. It's painted on. So there's absolutely no drag. Lightweight, low drag. <laughs> we have Heat management and cooling, that's this bit. This bit here. So carbon fiber bonnet, like a GT3. However, you've got these big cutouts here. And what's, is it? That's not just for show, right? It looks uh, cool. It does look cool. Absolutely not for show. Uh, that is to direct the hot air that's coming out the radiator away from the air intakes, which are at the back. Looks pretty mean. Let's move to this bit here. What's going on here? Because this is different than a GT3, isn't it? It doesn't have that. Yeah, correct. It's a lot more like the GT4 RS. So the idea is to create a sort of an air curtain. Wait a minute. So you're saying that the, the lesser Cayman has actually influenced the 911. Never before has it been thus. Cayman came first. Oh, it's weird, isn't it? Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> so, uh, so this car is inspired by the Cayman GT4 RS. Okay. Similar principles. Um, so yeah, the principle being is that to try and get the air flowing down the side of the car as smoothly as possible. Okay, so the air goes in there, no fakery there, it's doing a job. But then there's this bit, if we come here, this is where it all gets crazy. Look at this, what's going on with this and this? What's all this? So all of this uh, is to help manage the air that's in the air well. Yeah. So you get a lot of pressure. The air that. well? Uh, in the in the wheel well. Okay, I thought you'd created something new there. No. <laughs> air curtain. But yes, so that will allow the air to come out of the wheel well to like reduce the old GT3 the pressure. RS. E exactly. But the same. this bit e isn't. Exactly. So that uh, is something that we first saw on our race cars at Le Mans in the late 90s. That really does help the air flow, help bring the air through, helps cool the brakes, helps manage um, the lift that you normally get created by this area. Okay, so when I first saw pictures of this, I was like, mm, it looks a bit busy. Honestly, when you see it for real, like you can see part of the cross section of the tires. Oh, it just looks so good. Then down the side here, these are extended compared to a GT3, right? Yep, correct. So you've got the sills, again, all part of that airflow down the side of the car. And then similar sort of thing here. So normally uh, this car uses the turbo body. So, so it's, it's the, the only body. other model apart from the turbo that has this design, yeah? Correct. So that normally on the turbo would feed air into the engine. Yep. Um, on this, it's basically taking air in to help the airflow management through the rear of the car. Okay. So the air intakes are on the top. This is just to help air flow through here and also feeds the bit you can see just by your Oh, this there. here? Yeah, correct. Okay, right. What's going on with this though? Someone just stuck this on by mistake. What's this? So this uh, is all part of the hot air management again. Mm -hmm. So the air that's coming out of that centrally mounted radiator we don't want it to get sucked back into the air intakes yeah. because that hot air is going to drop you power. So what this does is this actually stops the air. So those nostrils yeah. push the air down the side. That stops it coming back over Really? The just that? Absolutely, yeah. Do you know one thing I found out about the benefit of having the turbo body? You know when you're admiring the aero, this is just a really good place to lean like that. Anyway, 
And moving on to the most important bit. Look at this, this is huge. The biggest ever wing fitted to a Porsche road car. Yeah, I mean, it's not just the area, which is, yeah, as you say, significantly bigger than anything we fitted yet. Uh, it's active as well. Mm -hmm. So you have this element on the top, yep. uh, is able to move. So you see the hydraulic activation yep. uh, that works on that. Wow. Um, so the rear wing is fully active. It can act as an air brake. Uh -huh. um, it can create additional downforce. Um, and you have DRS, which is the same sort of thing that you find on a Formula One car. So when you go to high speed, you can actually open this up to reduce the downforce and reduce your drag so you yeah. can go faster. Finally then, anything going on here? I mean, I thought this might be fake vents, but it's not even that actually has real holes in it. There's no fakery, is there, on this car? Everything's doing something. So the rear diffuser is actually very similar to the GT3. It only accounts for about 10% of the rear downforce. Really, the wing is, is what's primarily creating your grip at the back. And the car will always, so it's active aerodynamic, one thing we can't see on the front is there are sort of active elements within that front splitter that we looked at and it's constantly maintaining 30% front, 70% really? rear balance. Wow. Is there anything going on on the underside of the car that we can't see? So underneath the body's quite busy. So we saw on GT3 and GT4 RS kind of veins underneath the car trying to channel airflow. This has a lot more. So the underbody airflow, every bit as important as what we're seeing going on on the top. How do you feel about me just leaning on your car like this? It's fine. Are you sure? Just don't get your fingers stuck. <laughs> More on that in a bit. The GT3 RS sits 20 millimetres lower to the ground than a standard Carrera, much in the same way that a GT3 does. However, the RS has 50% stiffer springs because of all its extra downforce and uprated dampers. Like the GT3, you have 20 inch alloys at the front and 21s at the rear. However, the tyres are wider. Instead of 315 sections, you've got 335 millimetres. Just look at the size of those tyres. Just like the GT3, the RS gets solid suspension bushings for increased precision. Also like that car, it has the double wishbone suspension at the front. You know, a bit like a Mazda MX-5 has had since 1989. However, obviously the Porsche is a little bit more expensive and firm and better obviously. Now what is different on the GT3 RS's suspension though is that the wishbones themselves have been designed to produce downforce and they produce 40 kilos of downforce. It's nuts. Another thing they've done on this car is change the location of the lower wishbone arm to reduce diving under braking. Just like the GT3, the RS model has rear axle steering and an electronically controlled limited slip differential to send power to the wheel with the most grip. Then there's the fact that Porsche actually increased the track for the RS model, so it's 29 millimeters wider both at the back and the front. Finally, the brakes, just like with the GT3, you have 408 millimeter disc up front gripped by six piston calipers, whereas at the back, you've got 380 millimeter disc gripped by four piston calipers. However, for the RS, the brake discs themselves are slightly thicker and the pistons and the calipers have been upgraded. Now, if you want to, you can upgrade to these carbon ceramic brakes for 6,000 pounds, which is what this car has. You get yellow calipers then, well worth it. Before I drive this car, we need to talk about the engine. So I've got Rob again from Porsche to explain it to us. Now, like with my 996, there's a flap you can open to see the engine, isn't there? Good job it's PPF'd. Um, anyway, it's, it's quite a small little... Why don't they let you see the engine? Flat six, Matt. Keeps the weight low. Uh, I hate that. Anyway, tell me about the engine itself. So the engine's very similar to the GT3. Produces about 15 horsepower more, so 510 horsepower in the GT3. Uh, we've got 525 horsepower in this. Good, good. What about torque? Is that up as well? Torque is just a little bit down. So engine characteristics have been reprofiled um, more for the racetrack. What do you mean down? Well, the peak number is a little bit lower. We're only talking five, six Newton meters, but the torque profile is still really, really strong. And the idea being is that the main range that you would use this in on track would be that sort of six to 9,000 RPM range. So between peak torque and peak power. But there's less torque. I mean, there is a little bit less torque, but there's all sorts of other things that have been put into the engine to help it for the racetrack application. For example, with all the G forces that this car can pull, nearly two G on a circuit, the oil gets pushed around. Um, so the cylinder heads have all been redesigned with the oil channels to make sure that the oil's getting pushed to exactly where it needs to be all of the time. Okay, so um, so I just get and launch it then, yeah? Matt, it's a race car. It's all about the corners. Okay, you don't want me to launch it? It's cornering, Matt. Okay, so um, I definitely won't be launching this then. More traction issues. Lord 60, 3.65, so it's been 3.2. What's the quarter mile? 11.58.
Now, Rob from Porsche did say that this car isn't about like launching and straight line speed and stuff like that. So I think we better do it again. Okay, what I'm gonna do this time is turn my little traction control button to reduce the traction control, but keep the stability control on. That's better. 3.19, yes! What's the quarter mile? 11.19, full emergency stop now. Ah. Okay, the reason I did that is because Paul says this car will stop from 200 kilometers an hour in just 102 meters. I clearly didn't press the pedal hard enough because it took me 114 meters. Oh well, definitely doesn't dive into braking, I can give it that. Stopping from 60 miles an hour, which is the test I usually do, it's 30 meters, and I'm not sure I've had a car stop from 60 in a shorter distance than that. I reckon if I'm hard on the pedal, I can make it stop in probably 10 meters less than what I did. Mind you, I'll take that, that's good. I think I'm gonna launch this car one more time because the man from Porsche would clearly want me to. Now though, I'm gonna put the stability control into dynamic mode, which lets me turn the traction control all the way down to one. So it shouldn't interfere as much as it did last time on the launch. Maybe I'll get a better time, let's find out. Here we go. That was better. Oh yes, 3.14, yes it was better. What's the quarter mile? 11.14, braking now, braking now from 200. Oh. 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 Got cramp in my calf then. Did I get a better braking distance? No, I didn't. That's 137 meters that time. Same to 60, I, I don't know what happened there. Anyway, it was quicker to 60, wasn't it? And over the quarter mile. On the inside, the GT3 RS gets a load of upgrades over the standard 911 and even the GT3. So you get GT3 RS badging on the kick plates. You have GT3 RS logo here and a picture of the car from the side profile. You get this yellow surround for the rev counter. You also get this unique steering wheel with these extra buttons on. More on those later. You also get this unique door panelling there and here. Plus, you get little fabric poles to open the door. And you don't have another door pocket there. You actually have a net because weight saving. Another thing the GT3 RS has is common fiber here and here. So you can actually get that on the GT3, but you have to pay extra for it. Likewise, the GT3, you have to pay extra for an Alcantara dash. You don't in the GT3 RS. The GT3 RS also gets Sport Chrono as standard. You also get these lovely carbon fiber back bucket seats as standard on the GT3 RS, whereas they're extra on the GT3. They're just like the GT3, you do have the gear selector knob rather than the little toggle thing that you have on the normal 911, 992 generation. Obviously this car is a little bit more expensive than the GT3. It starts at 178,000 pounds. This one has the optional Visac pack, which is 26,000 pounds. Though you do get Visac written there and there, it's well worth the money, right? Oh, you also get this carbon fiber roll cage. You also get carbon fiber there as well on the door handles. Then the special magnetically actuated gear shifter paddles like race cars. So you pull it like that and then a magnet pulls the actual paddle in for the last bit of its travel. And it's, oh, like that. Now, if you really like this car and you think you can get an allocation, but you need to sell your current car, you can do it through CarWow. In fact, if you want to find out how much your current car is really worth, all you have to do is click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below to go to CarWow. Upload some photos, give a brief description, then our dealers will bid on your car. And if you want to, you can sell to the highest bidder or, or not. You can just do it out of curiosity. Service is completely free and there's no obligation to sell. If you want to do that at a later date after you've watched this video, then simply Google help me car wow and we will help you find out exactly how much your car's worth one of the great things about the porsche 911 is that it's a sports car that has some rear seats which you can use occasionally problem with the gt3 and the gt3 rs is that they've been removed hmm. so it's just a two-seater still you can store some luggage here if you want to well so long as you haven't got the vice app pack and this cage because it's much harder to put luggage in here and that's especially a problem on this car because unlike the GT3, the GT3 RS doesn't have a front boot because it's taken up with these new radiators. That brings me on to five or nine things about this car. This huge wing appears to attract creatures with wings. 
because it's the perfect bird perch. As a result, there is bird poop down this side in here, and you can see where it's little kind of bird feet have been there. And then another one's obviously been perched here. There's its bird feet, and there's a bit of bird follow through. One of the problems with all these cutouts for the aero is that they collect stones. Look, stones in there, and then you look at the ones at the front. Oh, look, stones in there. Hardly driven it. It's just full of stones. This car is stoned. No, not like that. This part of the wing is adjustable by these electric rams here. The only problem is, is that unlike the electric windows you have in the car, there's no anti-pinch safety system. So if you have your fingers there like that and someone presses the button, it'll probably break them. Because this has carbon fibre doors, you don't have the fold-away handles that you get on the normal 992, 911. So they just stick out like, don't look as good. Another problem with carbon fibre doors is they're quite light. So when people go to shut the door, they never shut it properly. It ends up like that. You really have to slam it because it's lighter. If you're buying a GT3 RS and you want to maximise its future potential value, then you absolutely have to spec the Visac pack with the carbon fibre roll cage, which means that the total car will come to at least £204,000. However, it's not all bad. Here's five cool things about this car. The Visa pack, you see, also includes these beautiful lightweight magnesium wheels, which save you two kilograms per corner. You also get carbon fibre drop links for the anti-roll bars for added stiffness and reduced weight. And of course, the beautiful exposed carbon fibre bodywork. Mm. Normal people might think that the GT3 RS has a soft limit, and it sort of does look. Can't rev past 4,000, oh dear. <laughs> However, those in the know know that with a GT car, you put it into drive, pull up both paddles, and then your soft limiter has increased to 6,000 RPM. <laughs> Not quite the full 9,000, but better than most cars anyway. The car has active aero, so it knows what speed you're doing and what type of driving you're doing, and it will deploy the DRS system as and when required to reduce your drag. Alternatively, if you want to do it yourself to show off and feel like a racing driver, you can press this button on the steering wheel here, DRS active. I'm feeling very smug now. And like with the previous GT3 RS, Porsche has removed the option for buyers to deselect having an infotainment system. They might be thinking, isn't choice actually a good thing? Well, no, it's not, because this is what happens. Somebody orders one of these cars and they get it from you and they think, I know, I'm gonna reduce the weight by three kilos by deleting the infotainment system. That will save me 0 0.00000000001 000 000 second round a lap of a track I'm never actually going to drive on. And then what happens is they decide to sell their car and you're looking to buy a GT3 RS. You weren't lucky enough to get a normal allocation when they were first launched. And you find a perfect car. It's got the great spec. It's got decent low mileage, all that kind of stuff. Unfortunately, though, the owner went and deselected the infotainment system. And so now you've got a car without an infotainment system, which is just annoying. This GT3 RS is more configurable than any other 911 before it. So when you put it into track mode, you can then access different functions such as the suspension, and you can alter the compression and rebound damping individually. Completely crazy. Press this button to access the Porsche torque vectoring, and you can alter the amount of torque vectoring you get going into a corner or out of it, so you can make the car more stable or a little bit more agile. You can press this button to alter the traction control or the stability control and that's the warning saying I'm turning it off. And you know what that means. Okay, like the Porsche man says, let's have a proper drive in this thing because it's about the handling, not necessarily the straight line speed, even though that's very good. Whoa! The front end on this is just epic! <laughs> and then the traction you get from the rear axle. Oh! <laughs> it's just so solid. I mean, you have to be going proper speeds to really get that aero working. And this is quite a narrow little track, so I can't go too crazy. But my God, 
you don't half feel part of the car and it feels like a proper racing car with the squeaking from the brakes and the howling from the engine. I'm loving the gear shifter though. This magnetically actuated click. What a lovely good click. Wow, this is so good. Oh, weight grips. Whoa, it's blowing bonkers. Last car I drove around here was the GT4 RS. Lovely car, but this, this is definitely its bigger brother. This is an absolute weapon. Get this thing on a proper racing circuit, it will blow your mind. And I just love the 911 setup, you know, with the engine at the rear, you drive them in a certain way. They've got so much character. Can't believe it's got more downforce than a GT3 Cup car. But while you will take this car on track, you're also going to want to have fun with it on a twisty country road, aren't you? So let's try in that environment now. So I'm in trap mode, but I'm going to go into sport mode now, which will slacken things off just a little bit, make it feel a little less extreme, though it's still pretty extreme. <laughs> yeah, the suspension is a little bit more yielding. Let me just go for these bumps. It's like a test track. And they've got these bumps. Oh, no, get out of that. Which are designed to test the car suspension. This car is so stiff that even with the suspension in the softer setting, it's still oh, pretty jarring. But actually, over undulations and normal bumps, the damping is very good, considering you've got such firm springs. Oh, yes. It's so nice to drive this, just blowing down a twisty road. Feels fabulous. Yeah, there's carbon ceramics. That's one reason why you might not want them because they can feel a bit grabby when you first touch the pedal and you get this squeaking sound. But if you're going to be on track a lot, they're definitely worth considering because the brakes will just hold out for longer. You don't need them on the road though. Oh, this thing. <laughs> And all the revs, running out of road before revs. <laughs> i tell you one thing you don't really run out of either, is confidence. Oh, the car just feels so stable. Yet at the same time, it's also extremely responsive. And obviously Porsche's stability management system is just so good at letting the car move around a bit, but just keeping everything nice and safe. <laughs> and the amount of grip you get, going around the corners, and then traction out of the bends is just insane. You can feel that front axle just biting in, and then the rear just putting the power down. <laughs> oh, you can drive this thing so quickly on a twisty road. Anyway, what happens when you're having to get to your twisty road? You know, just normal driving. Let's go into drive, normal mode. Actually though, I've heard the best thing to do is to go back into track mode, get on your suspension button and dial it all the way down to the softest setting. And then that should be the most relaxing drive. Well, so long as you haven't got sporty mode for the gearbox, you have to change gears yourself. So now I'm going over some bumpy bits here and it, yeah, you do feel the bumps. It's not terrible and I'd happily live with it in order to have a car such as this. The key thing is, it's not unbearable. But what about when you're cruising on the motorway? Okay, cruising on the motorway, 120 kilometers an hour, which is about 70 miles an hour. Oh, I think this is perfectly acceptable. I cannot hear any slight droning sound or wind noise or tire noise at all. Oh, actually I can, but I don't really care because I've got a Porsche 911 GT3 RS and life is good. Also, I can press this button to engage DRS. Yes. I feel the drag reduce. That'll entertain me on a longer journey. Actually, I know what else could entertain me. Let's have a listen to this engine. I wonder how fast it'll go in first gear. 80 kilometers an hour at the red line. What about in second gear? 125 kilometers an hour. I wonder what third gear is. 171 kilometers an hour. <laughs> That's the kind of thing I would do <laughs> when driving on the motorway. <laughs> I think I'm slightly deaf now.
So then, what's my final verdict on the new Porsche 911 GT3 RS? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon I should just go right ahead and buy it. It's brilliant. All I need to do now is figure out who I need to blackmail to get allocation.